You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Listen to more Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. The Magrito Podcast Network. Welcome to our next episode of My Grito Podcast. I am your host, Oscar Toledo, here to entertain you for the next hour, maybe hour 20 minutes. It really depends on our guest. Um, but I am especially excited today porque it fucking finally happened. Hallelujah. My Woo. business partner, Rob, has finally decided to come down and do one of these podcasts with me. So... Why don't we welcome El Señor Don Roberto Castellón? What's up, Rob? Hey, brother. ¿Cómo estás, man? How are you? Good. You see that energy, Gil? That's what I want. Give me more <laughs> energy like that. <laughs> but thank you for being here on the podcast. So you, you've you heard a um, couple podcast episodes already come out. And I know that I've been coming to you for a lot of feedback. We've been really kind of put, putting together the direction of this podcast. <sighs> How do you think I'm doing and tell me that you love me? Go ahead. <laughs> Validate him. Please. <laughs> now, this, this, is, this is a very normal thing. That Oscar is very, always coming to me for feedback. And, and you know, I always give you feedback, and, and whether it's good or bad. But honestly, man, you've been killing it, bro. It's been, it's been great. You know, you're, you know, obviously, you know, we're gonna, it's going to keep going. We're going to keep getting better. Um, but you've been killing it, bro. It's been great, you know, so far. So congratulations, and I'm proud of you, man. No, gracias. Um, for Hi. thank you for saying that. I appreciate you not only as a business partner, um, as my best friend, and also as my my soulmate. Oh, puro pedo, Mira. my wife Mira. is. Mira. <laughs> but no, I, I honestly appreciate it, and um, it, it's been as as Gil has mentioned to us when he interviewed both of us together on the Mind Buzz. Shout out Mind Buzz. I'm wearing the shirt. Buzz. Check it out on YouTube if you want to see it. <laughs> Um, but when, when we've been on the podcast with Gil, we talked about and giving him a lot of credit for doing a podcast because you have to be very vulnerable to do something like this because anything you say or do will be held against you for the rest of your fucking vida. Mm -hmm. And for me, even though I'm in sales work with life insurance, with retirement planning, the investment advice that I've been giving over the last couple episodes, um, I've never done a podcast. I've been in interviews, but I've never done a podcast and I got it. I, I want to give you your flowers, Gil, because this has been quite a trip and difficult. Um, I do a lot of public speaking. I've learned as much as I can when I do public speaking not to use the word um as a filler. And God damn it, I've said it so many times in the first three episodes. <laughs> I was tripping out on it, but it's something that I'm trying to improve on. And that's the thing. It's it's trying to improve on that, trying to improve on asking better questions, but it'll uh, Rob, thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate it. Of course, man. And Gil, again, congratulations to you, and thank you for the feedback as well. I really appreciate you. Besito. Ay. Besito, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and, but keeping in tradition with the flow of what we've been doing with My Grito Podcast, I do, we do use this platform to tell you a little bit about what's going on with My Grito Industries. The first thing that I want to bring up is some incredible music videos that are out there. I keep talking about these music videos, and I need those numbers to go up. So it doesn't count if I keep watching it over and over and over again. I need you guys to go on there, take a listen, take a watch. I'm sure you're going to really like it. Please leave a comment, throw a thumbs up, because this is going to really help out the artist. This, I'm not referring to our podcast. I'm referring to these music videos that the artists have put together. And it's not very easy to do these music videos because there's a lot of cost. There's a lot of time. Um, to really come up with a concept and to really put yourself out there, especially something that you're so passionate about as a musician, to take a song that you've spent so much time that you poured your heart into to create and now to make it a visual and, and make a music video. So I'm hoping that um, the next couple of videos that I'm going to mention to you, that you do take a uh, couple minutes of your time to check them out. I'm going to bring back an oldie but goodie because they are my homeboys and I enjoy spending a lot of time with these guys. I am talking about the Rundown Creeps. So Rundown Creeps, they've been on the label for quite a long time and 
they've they've done a music video called uh, Bear. Um, amazing video. It, they're very trippy guys. They love to smoke the mota. I can't blame them for that. Sometimes <laughs> helps with their cataracts. It helps out with stress. Um, but they they not only came out with a great music video, but they also have a fantastic album that they came out with. And a lot of great tracks are on there. Um, I mentioned one of the oldies but goodies that happens to be a cover song, which is Coldplay, Sci The Scientist. They did a great job with it. I encourage you to kind of go through go through their songs on Spotify. Take a listen. I'm sure you're gonna you're gonna love several of their songs, but also watch the music video. Also, our founding artist 3LH. They came out with the they came out with the movie the music video called Darlin. Great vibe. I think this actually took place. Rob, correct me if I'm wrong. This took place at uh, Rafa's house in Garden Grove. Yep. He has a nice pad um, there, and he has a lot of room to to do puros pinches parties. And it was a great music video. It has a lot of uh, it has a lot of fun, a lot of energy, and it does talk a lot about love. And the music video is actually sh highlighting a couple and the love that they have for each other. Yeah. Is that your interpretation of it? Yeah, yeah. They invited a bunch of friends over, you know, and you know, that, and, and that, that that's the first time we actually hung out with those guys, right? In their in their, their space in their garage, right? Well, we hung out with them. Um, oh yeah, in downtown Santa Ana. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we hang out. We actually did hang out with them, but you got pretty pedal. So did I. That's true. When we were yeah. first talking to them about the the label. Yes. And if you remember, there was a lot of tequila that took oh, we place. Went back a lot to of shots. Place after it was the same. Not, we we did. Or am I but confusing I, my visits? Maybe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, when Either you get way. his age, <laughs> you tend to forget shit. And we've been there a couple times, both yes. you and I. Uh, we were not there for that music video, so no, you no, will not I'm, find no, us. No, I'm saying well, I was there for the video. I'm saying. We have hung out with them in that garage where they shot that video. And yes, we I did. I think they, they captured it pretty well because that's the vibe of like their when they hang. They they hang out. They they have a few drinks. They have friends over. They play records. Like that was the vibe of of that space. And I think I actually captured it pretty well in that video. So absolutely, that's what I was trying to say. Well, uh, <laughs> good recovery for the record. For the record yeah. <laughs> Just want to clarify. Yeah. Uh, with that said, and also um, with three L H. Um, as both Rob and I know, and we will both be there. You see, Dios quiere, like my mom says. <laughs> um, on May 3rd, they're going to be opening up for Manic Hispanic. How the fuck did they do that? At the House of Blues and I. Yep. Yeah. So for those of you that are interested in checking out that, sh uh, that show, I, I highly encourage you to go to 3LH's Instagram. The link on their bio will, get, will show you where you can buy those tickets. But it's not only Manic Hispanic. It's also Seven Seconds, mm -hmm. and the Swinging Otters are going to be performing along with them. So you want to get there early. You're going to see Rob and I there um, kicking back a couple drinks and enjoying the music, enjoying some good uh, good ro rolas from these uh, from this lineup. Um, also, another music video that we've been long waiting for. It's with the homeboys, the Paranoias. They came out with their music video for Scanidero. This is a song that a song that they came out with months ago, but they finally and it takes time again. It takes time. It takes money to create these music videos, so I appreciate it when they do come out. But the Paranoias, they got very creative as they always do. Paranoias and Prof Professor Galactico, they came up with a very music, a very trippy music video that complements the song very well. So take a few minutes, check out their music video, give them the, give them a like, write a comment. They're already getting very, very high traffic because that's what this band does. They bring traffic. They really bring it. Um, and also, just recently announced, on May 4th, so the day after 3LH performs with Manic Hispanic, the Paranoias are going to be performing or opening up for the Voodoo Glow Skulls at the Michelada Rumble. So that's going to be a great, uh, a great show. But not only that, there's also some other things that are taking place at the Michelada Rumble that is My Grito Associated. Rob, why don't you tell them about it? Well, you and I are going to be out there, right? We will have a, uh, a space out there. You guys can come in, say what's up, hang out. You know, We'll have some of the uh, members of the My Grito Podcast Network joining us as well. Like, Who's going to be out there? I think we have the, uh, the guys from Chicano, Chicano Shuffle. Shuffle and El Compita Gil and mm -hmm. Amber will be there from mm -hmm. the Mind Buzz, 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 Buzz. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the invitation's out to the rest of the... Uh, might get the familia to come down, hang out. You know, we'll be playing some records out there, spinning and doing some. Uh, you know, I think we're gonna I think we we'll have some merch out there to kind of you know go, to hook people up and whatnot. So absolutely, the artists out, will hang out. The artists will be bringing their merch. We will be uh, we'll be bringing some vinyl, so you get an opportunity to pick it up. And um, Rob, I forgot to tell you this because at Michelada Rumble, as you know, 
Uh, one of the reasons that it's such a such an entertaining entertaining festival it's not only about the micheladas that are there that taste fucking awesome and the performers that are going to be there again in this case voodoo glow skulls and the paranoias and some really solid djs but there's also a lowrider show Mm -hmm. there's also lucha Lucha libre Libre. Mm -hmm. and i spoke to our homeboy super steve who is the creator of the michelada rumble and uh carnal i signed you up to wrestle (laughs) (laughs) so i hope you're ready wow I hope you're ready. You can wear a mascara or you don't have to, but you're right. going to be wrestling I'm in your gonna, tarantarans. I got to bust out my tarantarans and my, and my cape, yeah. Yes, yes. So it's finally happened. We're going to see Rob doing a little bit of Lucha Libre. I hope you're ready for it. I want you to go out there and I want you to cheer. Take your um, dollar bills. Yeah, throw some dollars at him. It won't be the first time or the last. I got, I got some of my workout planning now. <laughs> but we do have the Michelada Rumble uh, May 4th. You can go to our link, My Grito on Instagram and on our link you'll uh, you'll be able to buy those tickets for the Michelada Rumble and uh, by you buying the tickets through our link it gives us an opportunity to generate a little bit of income from those ticket sales so we can continue to do what we do here so we would greatly appreciate it if you can lend your support in that way if you want to go to an awesome festival check out some awesome music possibly meet some of the podcasters from the Magrito Podcast Network come down say what's up and uh, enjoy the show. Yeah, if you've never been, it really is a great event. Like, even if we weren't homies with Steve and the crew that puts that on, and obviously West Coast Podcast and, you know, and Steve and all that, like, it's an awesome event. Like, you guarantee you're going to have a great time if you come out to this. Absolutely. And with that, um, you mentioned West Coast Pop Lock Podcast. Of course, we can't forget about the Maigrito Podcast Network. So what we have is we have West Coast Pop Lock Podcast. That comes out every Tuesday night live on Facebook and on YouTube. And this is a podcast where you get an opportunity to to listen in, to chat, because you, you do have the chat feature. You can also call in and ask some questions to both uh, to Super Steve, to Johnny, and to Mario. So uh, give them some support. Check out their shows. They always have an incredible platform where they talk a lot about the West Coast music, uh, comedy. They, they do a lot of shit on that show. Uh, also, we have Chicano Shuffle. Chicano Shuffle also happens to come out with a new episode every Tuesday. So with the Compitas, with Fern, with Ramon, and with Esteban, um, they also put together a great platform, a great podcast that comes out every Tuesday, and they talk about all kinds of mamadas. We're very proud to have them on the label. It took them a long time because they were uh, they were being little bitches, and they didn't want to sign up with us right away. But we finally <laughs> wore them down. And they are now part of the Magrito Podcast Network. It took like three or four minutes to go down and actually oh schmoo them, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't know why they're being so fucking divas. <laughs> we and bought, then they we were talking about and everything. Yeah, yeah, they were yeah. talking about us buying their AC. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> fucking buy my i my AC. Yeah, we need it here in the garage. Yeah. It's fucking melting in here. <laughs> but oh, nonetheless, so we have we have those vatos. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have El Compita Steve Garcia from Emo Brown, straight out of Chula Vista, mm-hmm. California. So he does about uh, anywhere between one to three episodes a week. He interviews a lot of people uh, in the community that are making moves. Um, so if you're looking for some good inspiration, if you're looking for a lot of humor, because the compita is very, very funny, you want to go ahead and follow Emo Brown uh, and, and be entertained in that way. You can also visually see see their episodes. Um, and also they do have the Emo Brown Foundation, so they do a lot of charity work. So anytime I hear of a, a company, a group that does that type of service, um, I quite frankly, I'm just a big fan and I want to figure out more ways on how I can support them. A couple of ways that you can support them, uh, this this applies for both uh, or for all three, Emo Brown uh, and uh, Chicano Shuffle. They do, have, um, they do have an opportunity where you can invest and be a part of the Emo Brown um, Social Club. Is that what we're talking about? Well, not necessarily. Um, it's, and, and I don't know, bro, I went to you because I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> What's it called when you pay a monthly fee? Oh, they're, pa- they're Patreon. 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 Yeah, yeah. Mira that's, no that's, that's what it's called. It's their Patreon, but it's, it, they call it the Emo Brown Social Club. You're part of the Patreon, and for a nominal fee, you can you get exclusive content and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, for the record, both Rob and I are age 45, <laughs> and we tend to forget a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. So It happens more and more every day. Uh, I'll tell you what else happens, happens more and more, and more every day. day. Uh, well, I'll tell you later. Um, so uh, so we do have uh, e- uh, Emo Brown. Um, we also just announced 
or we've been announcing it now for some time, but it it has already come out. Uh, season two of the of the Tragos Amargos podcast. You may remember that our fourth interview was with El Compita Jerry Garcia. You can follow him on uh, Comedian Jerry G on Instagram. He's been making a lot of big moves. He has a Netflix special. He has two HBO specials. Uh, he has a DUI, pinche cabrón. Uh, but we talked about it on the, on the episode, so you make sure that you want to listen to it because he learned a lot from it. But he also has an incredible podcast along with uh, El Compita Fern and Samuel. They've done season two of the, uh, the Tragos Amargos podcast. You want to check it out. Season one is also out there. It's very entertaining. And just another little plug about uh, El Compa Jerry. He also has It's Not My Weekend podcast, another great uh, podcast that comes out every Tuesday that you may want to check out. That's not under the label, but Tragos Amargos is, so take a listen. Um, and last but not least, coming in at five foot six, <laughs> 280 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> es el, 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 el compa Gil with <laughs> the Mind Buzz show. Um, he doesn't have a mic at this time because he did forego his mic so he can give Rob an opportunity to say some shit. Thank you, Gil. But I will tell you, um, so with the Mind Buzz, I, I, this is an incredible, incredible podcast. They're all so visual. Um, they're, you can find them on YouTube. You can find them on Spotify. You can uh, also on Apple Podcast. So... Gil and his better half, Amber, have been doing a, an incredible job of interviewing all types of people in any type of industry, music, uh, social media, people that are that are making some big moves. He's uh, interviewed some incredible people that are just really, they're really trending, cabron. You got some, you got some interviews with some, some people that I was really impressed when you said their names. I was thinking, fuck. I don't know what you had to do oh, 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 to, to get them, but you did. So I'm very proud of you. I just wanted to tell you that that I'm very happy that the Mind Buzz is part of the Maguito Podcast Network. But also, all of this could not be possible without Mind Buzz Media. So if you're interested in doing your own podcast and you just don't have the equipment, you don't want to make the investment and in paying for all the different things, which includes the mic, the headphones, the mixer, all these different things that you need in order to do a good quality podcast. You have an opportunity here to leverage MindBuzz Media. Reach out to Gil. Uh, you can either reach out to him personally. Or you can reach out to the MindBuzz. You can reach out to the MindBuzz Media. All those pages are available. And he can, he'll be more than happy to tell you on what he can do in order to provide that service to you. As of right now, he does travel as he has traveled to my home to do these podcasts. But in the next Several weeks, he you can find he's going to be stationed somewhere else. That's going to be a big fucking deal. He's going to have an incredible place where you can do your podcast, where he'll be doing his podcast. And personally, we may move the Maigrito podcast to this new location, which is going to be uh, in Paramount. So, Gil, thank you for doing this, uh, doing this with me again. I really appreciate you. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. So now... The, the the let's get to it. Well, we do have some sponsors. I want to give some love to some sponsors. Fuck, I'm talking. My guest right now is getting ya cabron, ya way. Like, uh, yeah, we don't have that much time. But this couldn't be possible without the sponsor. So uh, a couple sponsors that I wanted to to highlight. Uh, we do have House of Chingasos. Um, they've been a good partner of us for a long time. They have some really cool shirts that we would like for you to check out. Not only shirts, but sweaters, uh, hats. Go to their page. They have also collaborated with us on a shirt, um, a drinking shirt, if you will, and some Lucha shirts as well. Uh, when you do go ahead and uh, make your selection on what you would like to buy or buy for even for uh, even for family members, um, because they do have all sizes. They also have stuff for kids. Uh, on checkout, make sure that you enter my grito, all one word, at the discount code section so you can go ahead and receive some savings and, and understand that those savings that you get Part of those we're going to receive here from House of Chingazos directly to My Grito in order to give us an opportunity to do what we do. So that's a good sponsor where you get some cool shirts. And at the same time, you're able to help us out in continuing to create this content. Lastly, a uh, sponsor that we have is Firme Mezcal. For those of you that are looking for uh, some, uh, some great beverages, maybe you tried mezcal before in the past. Maybe you have not. 
Um, but if you're open to it and uh, to tasting uh, this spirit that's very smoky, that has a lot of great flavor, Firme Mezcal would be a good intro to you for mezcals because not only does it taste great, but it also comes at, at a reasonable price. They have different levels in pricing, so you can simply go onto their website uh, for firme, firmemezcal.com or you can go to their Instagram to get more information on, on how you can support them. So with that, let's get to our guest. Um, I'm very excited about this guest because, as I mentioned on last uh, the, our last episode, um, I have a really, really good personal relationship with Harless Sweetwater. Um, we spend a lot of time together because I do consider him one of my carnales, and, and he does mean a lot to me. We've shared during the podcast, we talked about um, not only his music career, which is extremely impressive, but we also talked about the struggles that both him and I are going through with, with our mother. So um, I encourage you to listen to that interview um, to the fullest, because I, I, for, for many of you, I think it could provide some help. But in, 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 that same, in, in that same page, um, I, I feel the same way about this next guest. So this next guest um, is not only also an artist from My Grito, um, but I also consider her family. Um, she's been there quite a bit for my family, and we'll talk about it during the interview in what ways. Um, she is an, an incredible individual. She's very talented, incredible voice. And she's also um, well educated, which again we're going to go in, uh, get into it. How educated do you uh, do you ask? She, well, she's so educated that she fucking wrote her own bio, which I'm going to read to you right now. You didn't think I was going to say that, huh? Oh, God. So here it is. Tell me what you guys think. So, <clears throat> Maria Sanchez, aka Groovy MS, is a Chicana soul funk artist dedicated to creating music that allows folks to reminisce feel empowered, and be thankful for life and all within it. Maria is a firm believer of music being a powerful tool to connect and unite folks to serve as a community of support for one another. As a brown woman in the music industry, Maria knows firsthand how difficult it can be to have your voice heard. Therefore, when not singing or songwriting, Maria serves as a higher educational professional supporting and mentoring college students towards college degree completion and beyond. That's pretty fucking impressive. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What a chingona. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Maria Sanchez. What up, what up? I'm all, let, let's put a little more emphasis on Maria Sanchez. Maria Sanchez. <laughs> no, so what's up? Thank you so much for having me. Always excited to chat it up with my fellas, my favorite fellas here with My Grito Industries. Pues muchas gracias. It's always good to spend time with you. It's not only to talk about music, but also on a personal level. And that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, Maria. I wanted to get it out in the open as quickly as I can. Um, so I mentioned that um, you've been close and you've done a lot for my family personally. So a couple of the things uh, that I wanted to point out is the fact that my youngest daughter, Sofia, she had her quinceañera last year. Mm -hmm. And... We, uh, I wanted to do something very special for her, and I decided to reach out to you for your assistance. I wanted to have a, a special dance with her mm -hmm. with a song that I would think would be very m meaningful, but at the same time, I wanted to change some of the lyrics because this song that had a lot of the things that I wanted to say, but not everything was appropriate. Mm -hmm. and, and lo and behold, here's an opportunity for us to make it our own. Can you tell us a little bit about what what your experience was with this song, and sing us a little? I'm just kidding. You don't have to sing, but tell us about that experience. Venmo me, please. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, well, first and foremost, um, thank you for even considering me in that situation. It was a beautiful experience, um, very personal because it was a a father daughter, you know, relationship and moment to share with families and friends. Um, so the song was, um, I'm so proud by the impressions. And just like you mentioned, there was definitely some lyrics in that song that resonated well with, you know, your relationship with Sophia and growing up and especially because she's still so young and there's so much more ahead for her. But there was some inappropriate lyrics because the song is not really in a sense meant for like a daughter and a dad relationship. So 
yes, Oscar and I worked on the lyrics to kind of um, embed a little bit more about um, personal, I think, situations that were going on with Sophia as she's growing up and just wanting to emphasize how much you love her and support her. And that regardless of where she's at in life, of what's going on, eventually when she's in a partnership and she gets married, that you're still going to be there for her regardless of that. Um, so that was definitely a, a bonding moment, I think, for you and Sophia, but as well for us in, you know, that writing process. And we even talked about, like, wanting to release it. And I feel like so many dads could resonate with that. I know my dad would for sure. So Hopefully that's something in the works, you know, for the future under My Grito Industries. Well, let us know if I need to write a check. Let me know because I would I'm love to right get that. I'm right now on the spot. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would love to have that because I think, um, I, I and I mentioned on previous podcasts, mm -hmm. and I will ask you this question towards the end. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a death playlist. And <laughs> pu pu no, puro pinche emo over that. here. <laughs> uh, but within, so within the playlist, um, the, the thought process was always... Um, what songs mean something to me? Mm -hmm. Because uh, as I mentioned before, I've been to funerals before, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, during my lifetime, I've been there and I've known several of the people, unfortunately, that passed away. Sometimes it was extended family. Sometimes it was friends of friends, coworkers, things like that. But when I was there, I would listen to the music that was playing. And I'm thinking this is the music that that they're providing. This is not the music that means anything to this individual. Mm -hmm. and, and with my love, my passion for music... I don't want that moment to be to be experienced in that way by my friends and family that decide to show up. So I created this music, uh, this death playlist, if you will, songs that mean something to me. But these songs are also connected to my family. They're connect. I have songs for my dad, for my mom, for my siblings. I have songs for my wife. I have songs for my daughters. Mm -hmm. And some of these songs are kind of out there. But I'll give you an example with, you know, with any of my daughters. These are just songs that I've had moments with them. Yeah. Whether we're, we're cruising in the car, going to practice softball practice, and the song goes on, and both this daughter and myself are singing on the top of our lungs, mm -hmm. it still meant something to me. It's very and symbolic. I, it's yeah. very symbolic. And I know that when that time comes, which hopefully it's a long time from now, mm -hmm. that when that song comes on, that's a special moment for, for her, mm -hmm. and maybe only for her, the rest of the people might be thinking, why the fuck's this song playing? <laughs> but if they if they are friends of mine, they'll know that I'm a weird motherfucker. I'm very emo. Embrace it. I embrace it. Mm -hmm. That's who I am, and I'm not changing it for anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, we're I, already here. Why don't we just start with that question? Switch it up a bit. Well, well let's yeah. do it. For, for you, if we're talking about like, the death playlist, mm -hmm. what what would you say, Maria, is your your top song that you would probably put on there? I've thought a lot about this, like um, what what song really means a lot or just like at first sound, right? Like the first couple seconds, because um, for me personally, to, in order to like a song, like you have to kind of catch me in the first couple 10 seconds, to be quite honest. If I don't hear something that like intrigues me, I'm like, oh, all right, let's play next. So for me personally, I would have to say uh, Mi Tesoro. But in the style of um, <laughs> uh, esa no, esa no. <laughs> yeah, it's just such a beautiful song. It is. And in that style that he sings it, it's I don't know, like it just it stops everything that's going on and makes me just appreciate life and like where I'm at in the moment. So that would be for me, because I when you hear it, it's like a happy song and yeah. it's just so beautiful. So. Hopefully, you know, many years from now when my family is gathering to embrace and share and remember my memory and me um, when that song plays like it warms their heart and reminds them of the amazing memories that we made together. So that would be my song. Mom, what about you, Rob? <laughs> yeah. What about you, Rob? I'm not being interviewed today. I'm just, I'm, I'm doing no. that. I'm doing no, that. No, Let's no, 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 no. hear it. You as a music guy, I mean, you've been mm -hmm. in, involved in music, first of all, your life, but in your career, K, the world famous K-Rock right out of college. So I know you've probably thought of this question because we've talked about it. Maria, we've gone to the extent because Rob and I, we go to baseball, a baseball game together where we play hooky, we request PTO, <laughs> and we go to an Angels game every mm -hmm. fucking year. But we always start off the morning with a little bit of golf, a lot of drinking, 
And eventually we stagger our way to the stadium. And when we're there, we're hearing the angels go up to bat. Some, and it's been very painful lately. <laughs> um, and it most likely will be this season as well. Painful, yeah. <laughs> but when they come out with their songs, we've asked the question, if you were a Major League Baseball player, what song would you come out to? Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of fun with that. Mm -hmm. But I know we've also had the conversation about the death playlist. Because we 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 have, along with two other friends, Tad and JR, we have our trips that we go to Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, what, what I'm doing right now is giving you time to think, bro. Exactly. I was like, you better be taking <laughs> we, advantage. We, it, it, and and, and shit, as shit. I'm giving people time, don't you hate when they're it's like, going, well, let yeah. me think. I gave you all the time to think. Um, we go to Mexico, and um, we go to Mexico every year as a symbol of our friendship. These are guys that I grew up with. Rob being the guy that I've known the longest. Um, 12 years old we were? Yeah, we were tw wow. about 12 years old. So I've known him the longest. When we went to Mexico, we had a Norteño come in, and I and I requested <laughs> Ramona Ayala and Tierra Me Cantando. And these guys just see me getting very emotional, and, and I explained to them at that moment, this is what that song means to me. And if you listen to the lyrics, you understand why that would mean something to me and why mm. it means so much that that's fucking number one on my on my death playlist. Because yeah. I when that time comes... I don't want it to be a sad moment. I want people to celebrate my life. I want them to honor my life. And I'm hoping that they'll have a lot of good things to say about what I contributed mm -hmm. to their lives. Yeah. And if they feel that way, they should be honoring me. So that's my song. Rod. A ver, ¿qué tiene? Uh, see, uh, <laughs> What's see, your you, song? You and I have, we've, I guess we, we have talked about this in the past, about death playlists and whatnot, you know? And I'm going to tell you, admit you, yeah, I'm sure you'll probably admit your death playlist is, just like I said, very emo, dude. Like you're, I am sad. What with, do you expect? Within, within 10 minutes, uh, you're bawling listening to oh, your playlist, right? He's and a we've, we, we've been dri driving back from our annual trip from, from Mexico, and he puts it on, and we're like, dude, like, it's it's not a happy drive. So, what, what damn, what, tell me how you really feel. What I, what I, what I, what I think what, I'm gonna cry I, now. What I want to say is, like, my death playlist, dude, I don't want it, I don't want people to be. Like I don't want people to be sad at my at my dad mm -hmm. my during my death playlist, you know. So, mm -hmm. like I said, like I know you have songs for you know your your wife and your you know your your family and whatnot. So, I have those too, but I also have songs that I think that are just like some of my favorite songs. You know, they could be happy, they could be mellow. So it's like it's almost like you're right. I don't want the funeral home or whatever to decide what's playing at at my funeral or my service, right? So, I I, I have a playlist, but it's not like what you might think of like as like. It's more of my favorite songs kind of thing, you know? And one of them would be, like, I played it earlier. Like, I think one of my favorite songs of all time is, is Smokey Robinson is Tears of a Clown. Like, I just love that song, you know? It's not for any reason that, like, mm -hmm. my mom played it or nobody else, you know, whatever. It's just, I just fucking love that song, you know? So that's Is that number it. one? It's one of my number ones, yeah. Smokey Robinson, Tears of a Clown. So that's on it, um, you know? Mm -hmm. But there's just a bunch of songs on on my playlist, you know? It's like, if, you, if, if, we're, if we're adding... Uh, a meaning behind songs. There's a Green Day song on there for sure. You know, um, there's a song called Redundant that Green Day plays. Mm -hmm. That's very much like nostalgic and think, thinking back at like, you know, like your life and reflecting on it. And that's on it too because that's uh, that reminds me of us of us from high school. We were my, very much into Green Day when we were yeah, absolutely when we were younger. You know, so I'm bummed that uh, they played last night at Anaheim House of Blues and we were not there. We were not there. I was bummed too. We both could have went there with our Green Doc Martins. Could have. Yeah. We could have been holding Thank hands. <laughs> yeah. Those tickets are expensive, and, though. Yeah, that's true. But uh, I talked about it at a previous podcast with Jerry Garcia. Um, uh, this was specifically about Juan Gabriel. So you're here right now. You weren't here when Jerry was when I was interviewing Jerry. But I talked to him about it, you, our experience with Tad and Jr. when we went to Mexico to El Cielo, and they told us about. So four times a year at the winery El Cielo Maria. Um, they host a show mm. and it's usually a big artist. Mm. And when both, when all four of us were there to celebrate our brotherhood, um, Juan Gabriel was performing mm. and we asked, well, where's this going to take place? And they said, well, it's out there in the vineyard. It's pretty far out there. There's, uh, very little electricity. I mean, they're still going to be able to perform, but it's very dark. It's very intimate. Mm -hmm. They're going to give you a little, a little mesita it's with a little romantic. candle mm -hmm a bottle of wine, a couple of glasses, and you get to enjoy Juan Gabriel. And us, in our immaturity, said, <laughs> Mas puto. Oh, my God. <laughs> Here's where it gets worse. Because we obviously, none of us have any problems with that. I mean, we were pretty open about it you know, and how we feel about LGBT. Yeah, it's very welcoming. But, but at the same time, 
this was presented to us after we were done with our winery. We're a little old school in the sense, but we're very open minded. Mm -hmm. So that comment came out at that moment. The moment that one person said that, which I will not say who it was, mm -hmm. I think naturally makes all of us feel awkward. Okay, you can't be like, no, but I really want to see him. I want to stay. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. But we so we didn't. Only for a couple months later for him to pass away. Mm. We missed such wow. a huge opportunity. And I'm bringing that up because, bro, we need to go to see Green Day. <laughs> I don't care what the price nice, is. Nice segue. <laughs> I know, right? We need to go see them. We've never yeah. seen them together. That's why. I've seen him perform, yeah. but I've never seen him perform we've, with we've you. We've seen him individually, and we should definitely make that happen. Yeah. 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 So uh, I, I love your song, uh, Rob, Maria. Um, out of uh, the few people that I've asked, because uh, this is only episode number six. Um, Can't believe number six. El ah, seis. Just kidding. <laughs> but um, number seis, and you're the only one that's hit a song that's on my playlist, Mi Tesoro. Mm, it's just so special. It is. It, it has a lot of meaning, and not just in the sound, but like how, and I kind of wanted to touch on that, that that's the beauty about creating your own playlist. You have control Absolutely. over... Mm -hmm. The different genres, uh, if it's something symbolic to you because of an experience or versus, yeah, it's, maybe it's just your favorite jam and it just kind of gets you in the mood to enjoy your day, to start your day, you know? And that for me, Mi Tesoro is one of those songs that at any moment I could put it on and I'm just like, whoa, like an instant good mood, you know? It just feels incredible. Yeah. There was a birthday party that um, I went with my family and I took this picture at the moment because they were, uh, we, we had an entertainer there that was de doing all these rancheras, all the Spanish music. And she was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And I would see my wife singing, which she doesn't sing. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I, when I say she doesn't sing, she doesn't openly sing in front of anybody. Yeah. But she was singing. My daughter was singing. Mm -hmm. And we got next to each other and we took this picture of all three of us. Mm -hmm. And then I put Mito Soro. And that, that post which is the third one that i, I actually pinned it because that means a lot to me right mm -hmm. um that's how much that song means to me it's like such a such a great rola mm -hmm. and to hear that it's also fucking your number one made us a little bit closer yeah damn am i are we about to become best friends are we about to become best <laughs> friends <laughs> did we just become best friends <laughs> um but another another time that you've been there for my for for my family um this is a great thing about you, but it's also going to be a little bit knock on the, my friend. It has nothing to do with you. Mm. It has nothing to do with mm. you. So, um, unfortunately, one of my good friends, they, they, um, they lost their mother. Mm -hmm. And um, during the funeral, they wanted to make it as special as they can. Mm -hmm. And they knew that uh, Rob and I have My Grito Industries, and, and they do follow it. They do support it. Um, uh, the, the couple that I'm referring to, um, at least I'm going to refer to the couple, not the brothers. So I'm going to refer to the couple because I know they do listen and they do support. Mm -hmm. um, so Manny and Sonia. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. <laughs> um, they they do follow and they absolutely love your voice. They love you as an artist. They have still yet to go to one of your shows. And that's OK. But I push them that they have to go <laughs> and they do want to go and they will be there. Um, but nonetheless, so unfortunately, Manny's mom passed away and it would be it meant the world to them if you would sing a couple songs mm -hmm. and you sang, I, if I remember correctly, three songs. I believe so. Three songs. And Mi Tesoro was actually one of them. Yes. Yeah. And you had other bangers around there that were fucking amazing. You can <laughs> see people getting emotional. You can mm -hmm. see them. Uh, really getting emotional, but the way you sang it was just absolutely beautiful. All we did is we showed up with a Bluetooth speaker, mm -hmm. um, found the just the, a mic, got yeah. a mic, and you went to town, and it was amazing. It it was difficult though, if I'm gonna be honest, because um, I I don't know if you recall, but when we were talking about it, I was kind of hesitant at first. Yeah. Um, just because I don't do well with funerals, because. Um, well, I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but like even my own mom passing away and um, having, you know, my grandparents pass away. And just in those moments, because it is so personal, uh, I'm a I'm a sensitive gangster. OK, <laughs> like um, so in those moments, because I do feel sympathetic and empathetic with uh, folks when they're losing someone or, you know, in in very um, certain situations that it gets really difficult to speak on, like. That was hard for me. Um, so for me, like, I just had to tell myself, 
just think of how special this moment is for this family. And I could only think about like his mother even appreciating that, you know. Um, and so that's what got me through it. Thankfully, I didn't cry, but it, it was an emotional like moment for sure. It and was. I was honored to have been asked, you know. So I, I really do appreciate that as well. And, and I feel that you honored um, um, you honored me. Um, you made it very special for a lot of people. Um, except maybe for the immediate family. Mm. Let me tell you why. And I was very embarrassed. And this is why, why I'm calling uh -oh. out Manny. Manny, I'm, I'm calling you info. out, Manny. <laughs> Um, but it, but it, 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 to a certain extent, it's not really his fault, but I don't know if you recall this, it, it stuck with me because you did an amazing job. Um, and, and you, and you, you were really doing me a favor based on what you agreed in you coming down, what you received in order to come down. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until, uh, during the eulogy services that, um, which was that same day that Manny came up to us and he said, first of all, thank you for doing it. Uh, it was, you did an incredible job. Mm -hmm. But uh, my uncle came up to me earlier and he told me, do you even know that your mom really doesn't even really like that type of music? I do remember you mentioning this after, yes. And you were hesitant to even tell me about that. And, I, and, and my apologies if I, I thought he told both of us. No. Well, I so if it was me, I shouldn't have told you that. Because I got the impression that he told both of us. Um, but well, here, well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. and, and this is Manny with all due respect. Um, you wanted to do something very special for your mom. And I, I believe you accomplished that. But here's the thing. I think for some of us, because these are not the type of conversations that we constantly have. I mean, you can listen to the previous episode with Heart of Sweetwater mm -hmm. where we were talking about this. How well do we really know our parents mm -hmm. if we're not having these conversations? Yeah. Um, for a lot of us, if our parents are about music and you, as you're growing up, you hear them playing certain type of music. So you figure that's their shit. That's what they listen to. Mm -hmm. um, but he was a little bit off target in, in, in that type of music for his mom's services. Nonetheless, it was music that I think in the Latino space is honoring based on the lyrics and based on the way you sang it was honoring that person's passing. Mm -hmm. But just a reminder, um, if you don't know what kind of music your parents are into, and maybe they're not into music at all, but if if you don't know, ask them. Yeah. And and if you want to turn them on to music, have them go to Groovy underscore oh MS. <laughs> <laughs> Listener of music, Maria Sanchez. <laughs> He's and like, this they is may a like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really appreciate that. And, and the last thing that I, because there's a lot that I wanted to cover with you, Maria. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing is I... Um, so on, with Rob and I, when we did one of Mas Altos, our charity compilations, one of them was to the uh, East Los Angeles Women's Center. Yes. Um, they do an incredible job in Los Angeles where they do support heavily, heavily in the Latino space, but it's all women that have suffered any type of physical, mental abuse, mm -hmm. and they give them a, a safe place to come to. Mm -hmm. They provide a lot of different types of support mm -hmm. in order to help them become more independent, um, to receive therapy to receive money financial support mm -hmm. in order for them to make the move that would not only put them in a safer place but also for their children if there are any children involved mm -hmm. so this is a very special charity to me that i was actually part of their advisory board for mm -hmm. for a short while so i can see on how how we can help in getting the word out more about mm -hmm. this uh, incredible incredible charity but they did ask me they were doing an event in, um, at their facility and they wanted a, a musician that can really help out and just have some a beautiful voice and great lyrics. And I asked you to do it, and you did it. Mm -hmm. You easily did it. You went with. It was Esteban uh, and Robert. So my. Uh, you you and barely drummer. were building your band. I mean, you were yeah. already performing for a while as a solo artist, but to to start building your band, which we'll get to, mm -hmm. you came in there raw with three <laughs> people, and you fucking killed it. We tried our best. <laughs> no, you, you did a great job, and I received a lot of a lot of great compliments um, from my representative that that I have in rela a relationship with. There, uh, you did a great job, and I wanted to thank you for mm -hmm. lending your talent to this th these type of uh, charities. Absolutely, and it was a beautiful space that they held um, for um, survivors and um, individuals who unfortunately were affected by domestic violence and all that. Um, 
it was beautiful to see community come together and hold space for for those individuals, but also to like remember um, those who are no longer with us. And the, yeah, I believe they do it annually, which is even more amazing. Yeah, that it's a long term effort. It's not just a one time thing. No, absolutely. Um, with that, let's transition to something else because it was a little bit connected. Nothing with the views, nothing with anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the your your upbringing with your fam- familia. Mm-hmm. So you have mentioned to me, and on past past podcasts that you are the youngest of seven children. Yes. How is I'm it to have the, How is it to have those all those older siblings si- siblings in your life? Um. You know, I I don't know. I always felt like we're all the same age almost Um, just because of our upbringing. uh, I had to grow up very independently um, to some extent, you know, very grateful and fortunate for my parents who I'll talk more about. um, But I am also grateful to have my older siblings who have had their own experiences and are willing to, you know, share insight into maybe what to do and not do in certain situations. But I'm also all about discovering that on my own in my own journey as well because we all have our own perspectives and desires in life but but it's i have good relationships with you know majority of my siblings i would say some of us are a little bit distant unfortunately it happens um, just because of actual physical distance of not living within the same vicinity and all that but yeah very grateful for all of them i love them all i I hope for the ones that you're in in more constant communication with Mm -hmm. that they appreciate the feedback that you're giving them and the guidance that you're you're giving them, even though you're the youngest, <laughs> which I would think for an older sibling, mm-hmm. let alone an older person that's trying to get advice from a younger person, mm-hmm. but this is siblings. Mm-hmm. To get that advice, I think if it comes from the heart mm-hmm. and it comes from full, I know you. I think yeah. this is what you should do in order for things not to repeat mm-hmm. and for you to get on the right pace. I'm not saying that those are the conversations that you're having with your siblings, mm-hmm. but... Um, I, I think it says a lot about your maturity mm. to be in that position to, I'm sure not only to give them advice, but I would think from time to time they may have given you advice as well. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's a mutual relationship, right? Good. Like, we each kind of check in with each other. Um, I may have experienced something that I can give insight on and vice versa. So, yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Well, um, I, I, we mentioned it earlier. So, um, your mom, and when I'm talking about your mom, and this probably has a lot to do with who gave you that beautiful voice that mm-hmm. you have, the, the voice of a saint. <laughs> um, so your biological mom, mm-hmm. um, I understand that you, she, she she passed away at a very young age for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you were only eight years old, no? Yeah, this was back in 2006, so I was, uh, I believe I was eight, turning nine, eventually, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I could only imagine... Um, what that must have felt like for you. Um, and, and we don't necessarily have to talk about it unless you're comfortable mm-hmm. with that. But um, I, I mentioned that you most likely receive your musical talent from her mm-hmm. because she was actually in a mariachi group, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I don't remember much, unfortunately, about my mom. And I'm sure um, that has to do with the trauma experience, not just there, but, you know, years later, Uh, about what separated our family and um, the situation that we were in. But yes, from what I've heard, she was part of a mariachi group. And till this day, I still haven't seen any videos or anything, but I would love to like eventually find something like that. Um, I know she has, uh, I was going to say in Spanish, familia in Guadalajara, um, in Jalisco, Guadalajara, um, that we kind of have a little bit of contact with. So I've thought about reaching out to see if they have like any videos or anything like that. Um, just haven't gotten the time to, to do that. But yeah, I, I would say that's most likely where I get my, you know, musical talent and um, very grateful for that. And in a way that's uh, a way for me to remember her despite not remembering her, you know, physically, unfortunately. Um, I feel like I have certain moments where I'm hoping they're actual memories and not my mind creating these memories in my head of her. Um, but just grateful to have like my siblings who can speak on some experiences and share more about her. You know. Nice. Yeah. The um, you mentioned you would like to find possible video if it is out mm-hmm. there. If it is out there, are you saying that most likely it would have taken place in Guadalajara, not not here in the U.S.? 
I would think so, because um, I believe she grew up mostly in Guadalajara with her family. She has a uh, um, siblings who look just like her too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But there's not even photos or anything at all. Or we have photos, photos, a couple of photos here Definitely and there. Yeah, uh, my family says that I tend to resemble her mm -hmm. a lot. Um, so my sister got like her name, but I got her beauty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and her voice. Yes, and her voice. Um, but no, yeah, I, I haven't seen any vi uh, any videos, just photos. Yeah. yeah. Do any of your siblings have like the same like musical talent or voice or? Um, you know, I I've talked about this before, where I feel like my brother Abraham does have a musical talent, but he just doesn't try. Mm -hmm. Because when I've seen him where he's drank before and, you know, a little under the influence <laughs> might get you going. And I've heard him sing and I feel like he can low key sing, but he just doesn't think he does. So he doesn't try or attempt to. Yeah. Um, my sister, Stephanie, shout out to her. That's my, my bestie right there. Um, unfortunately, she does not have the musical talent, but that's OK. Um, one of my biggest supporters for sure. But I, I think my brother low key does. Mm. But he, I don't know. He hasn't tapped into it. So. Mm. <laughs> I would think a nice way for him to kind of practice or to get inspired is when you started your Instagram page mm -hmm. for gro groovy underscore MS. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, you were covering a lot of not only soul, but what I would say your favorite type of genre, R&B. Mm -hmm. You covered a lot of bangers on that. <laughs> thank you. Thank um, and anybody can simply go because I believe you still have all of them up, right? You Most yeah, of them up. They're under like the little... Um, a reels tile yeah. like so it's kind of archived for my main page but it's in it's still there yeah uh from those covers that you would do um mm -hmm. that you did such a great job with <laughs> is there one song that you would say when you sing this song and i'm sure there's several songs that do that but sometimes mm -hmm. there's usually that one rola that you're like mm -hmm. I, I love singing this song hmm. that's a toughie i feel like there's a couple songs that like I can listen to and I'll just go all out. Uh, I really love music Soul Child, which I don't know if you're familiar with. Um, but he, he I, I don't, I can't remember the exact song I did. Um, it might have been Love or something like that. Um, but that one's such a soulful track that, like, in the moment, you just like listen to the lyrics and you feel like you're in love, even if you're not, you know? <laughs> um, I think that one and. I'm trying to think of any other ones. Oh, it's funny. Uh, I remember doing the Ooh Baby Baby by Smokey Robinson as well. Oh, snaps. But my band and I now do a different version by the San Francisco TKOs, which is like a whole nother level. Like it just, it's insane. Like it's so cinematic to me and I love doing that version. Um, but that's another song that I really love doing as well. So from hearing that, and your ability to just be a, an incredible singer. Uh, and you, you definitely being down with covers. <laughs> At the My Grito four-year anniversary, if you can do Mi Tesoro for me ah. and Tears of a Clown for Rob, <laughs> a toda madre, that would be Cual fucking badass. Cual Tears, Tears of a Clown, smoke ah, Robinson. All right, I guess I better start learning them now, huh? You gotta add a member. Well, Mita Soto's already there. My band uh, it's just already there. To learn you gotta it, add yeah. a member because they, uh, that that's one of the few songs that I that I'm aware of. I'm probably mistaken, but mm -hmm. it has an oboe in it. Mm. So find an oboe player. Look at Nerd Flex. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Noted. We'll awesome. see what we can do. <laughs> but um, so after that, um, after working very hard, being very persistent, and um, uh, work ethic being there, maybe with a little bit of luck. It's one of those things about a little luck. It always helps. But at the same time, your talent, um, your voice, your your hard work, and you finding the courage to put yourself out there mm -hmm. landed you an opportunity to work with Soul Tune, the first label that you were associated with. Mm -hmm. And you released, uh, you released a 45 with them with mm -hmm. two incredible rolas, which I handed to you right there. Come on, let's, let's do a little... Mira no mas. Peak of this. Dynamite and yes. sensation can be found on that yeah, 45. Beautiful. I, I love the colors that he chose on it, too. It's like a pink, a purple, yellow in there, orange. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Nick from Soul Tune Records. They're based out of Stockholm, Sweden. Um, just a little like overview of how we kind of got connected. Um, I had entered a competition hosted by Big Crown Records. Um, it was 
called uh, Now It's Your Turn, and it was for a song that they released with uh, one of their artists, uh, Lisa E. Kevin. And basically, like, folks got to write their own lyrics to this song. And so um, a homie of mine, Alejandro, shout out to him, always give him major love for, you know, sending it to me. And they're like, hey, like, you should enter. But I entered super last minute, the day of, almost didn't. And I submitted my um, my video. And if you look at that video, it's like outside in the backyard. So you you hear like mo motorcycles like passing by <laughs> and everything. I'm like, oh, like it is what it is. You know, like I'm just here to showcase the, the song and my talent. And um, I ended up winning third place. And that's how Nick from Soul Tune um, discovered me. And he reached out and he's like, hey, I would love to work. And I was real hesitant at first because um, at the time I didn't even think about getting serious uh, with music yet, you know, because I've always expressed that education is a priority for me. Um, I love stability, considering the way I grew up and just knowing what I want to do in life in the future. It was really, you know, important for me to first get my education done before getting serious. But it worked out. We released music and now we're here with My Grito as well. And we released something else that I'm sure we're going to discuss. Yeah, we were able to come out with... Um uh, co-release with mm -hmm. Soul uh, Tune. We mm -hmm. we came out with our own 45, which we were very grateful about. So you can get a little spotlight as well. Mira no más. <laughs> Check out the definition on those arms. <laughs> Please do a close up. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, He's uh, like, so, not the arms. <laughs> <laughs> the gun show over here. So with Hey Love and Give Me Your Lovin', we had an yes. opportunity to come out with that 45. Incredible, incredible 45 that really showcases <laughs> the soul and, and the love behind this music. Um, let me ask you, hey, love really gets to me. Yeah? What about it? I want to hear it, 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 it. We're talking. No, I, I really do because, yeah. like, I feel like in interviews that I've had, the opportunity to talk about it, it's me talking about what the song represents or what inspired it. But I, I want to hear, like, a listener's perspective. Like, what about it caught your attention? Or what lyrics resonated with you, you know? the um. So for me, it, with hey, love, it was just... I took it as the impression of um, love and heartbreak. It was one of those mm -hmm. things where it was a combination between two, mm -hmm. um, which I've experienced quite a bit in, mm -hmm. in early on, and, and part of the reason probably that I, I do like very dark music. But the way, the <laughs> way, no, es no me digas that. <laughs> but I think it, it, to me it seemed when I'm listening to Hey Love, and I can only say this to um, a couple songs mm -hmm. about a couple songs. It really seemed like a a love letter. That was coming from somebody and you were just with every talent that you have, you were you were reading, singing mm -hmm. that love letter to people throughout this song. And just mm -hmm. the the way you did it was just very heartwarming and very touching. That was my interpretation of it. A heart, a love letter of heartbreak to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, what a beautiful interpretation, because in a sense, it is a letter. And I think I've shared this like on social media um, where I was doing these, like, break down the song type things. And if you read into the lyrics, it goes into phases. It's like, you know, um, I love you. You know, we've shared these moments, but now you're a distant memory. Yeah. And I think that's so real in, in people's relationships and situations where, like, we embrace those memories, whether they were good or bad, because ultimately they've shaped who we are now, right? Absolutely. They've allowed us to to grow as a person and in a partnership for our future partner, you know, if that's the case for someone. But it is like a love letter, so kudos to you. Oh, gracias. <laughs> I passed. Great. God, great. when you asked me, I got so nervous. I'm like, oh, Gosh, my God. Shit. Oh, my Here, God. Go to Rob. Go to Rob. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, incredible song. Um Thank you for for creating that song because it it, it is a fantastic one. Um, the let's talk about your band. Okay. Yeah. So uh, for the longest time you were performing as Maria Sanchez, but mm -hmm. as of a few weeks ago, officially, yeah, this this machine <laughs> of music and love has mm -hmm. a new name. Can you share it with us? Yeah, we are now called Maria Sanchez in the Midnight Groove. Shout out to Jacob, my keyboardist, who was the one who um, put that into our chat because we were like going back and forth about what names like I wanted groovy or groove or something of that sort in there. Because, I mean, hello, like my whole thing is groovy. Right. So uh, 
I'm really excited about the name. Folks have ten. I mean, they've um, expressed that they really enjoy it as well. Um, we're looking at a new logo, hopefully within the next couple weeks, um, and maybe even releasing work under that. Um, because I do want to ensure that everyone in the band is being accounted for. Like it's not just myself; it's a group effort. Um, when it comes to the writing process, to performing, you know, for live shows, it's not just me. It wouldn't be possible. So uh, it was really important for me to finally get a name for everyone. So. I commend you on that, and I think that has to do a lot with maturity and just being a, a great individual, period, mm. because it, it, being a performer, especially as Maria Sanchez, a lot of the spotlight is on you, and mm -hmm. typically of, of several bands, the attention does fall on the lead singer, on whoever is doing vocals. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, there's, all the, there's several bands in history where there's other band members that have also received the spotlight because mm. of either their ability to play the instrument very well mm -hmm. or because of their antics outside of the band. Mm -hmm. But here you have yourself who's saying, no, I want all of you to be responsible for the sound, to be held accountable to a certain extent, because um, this is not only my dream that I'm going to, I will accomplish in one way or another, but this may be your dream as well. Mm -hmm. And if, if I'm the vessel, if this band is the vessel that's going to help us accomplish it, mm -hmm then we need all hands on deck and we need everybody to be held responsible to a certain extent mm -hmm. in order to, to do that. I don't think a lot of bands do, do that. Uh, Angie from the McCharmley's on our previous interview, on one of our previous interviews, she did give a lot of credit to the rest of her band because mm -hmm. um, she had mentioned that she's fortunate enough to be performing with her favorite musicians mm -hmm. and the amount of contribution that they bring to the band. Yes. Uh, being part of My Grito, we've talked to a lot of bands that are currently on the label that have shared also the same sentiment, which I'm very grateful for. And we've talked to bands that are not on the label, but they've talked to us about the opportunity. And unfortunately, we didn't see that. We didn't see that synergy between the band. And when we don't see that, it's a, it's a red flag. It's a red flag because that band may not be able to survive for much long mm -hmm. if there's not a real full commitment between every member in the yeah. band. By giving them that responsibility, everybody's something. Mm -hmm. It makes it feel like this is not Maria's thing. This is our thing. Yes, exactly. So I commend you for that. Thank you. And yeah, that was really important for me. Even from the beginning, I've always expressed to my my musical familia, because they're not just a band. Like We've created such a, an amazing bond and friendship that I do consider them like family, um, that everyone's opinion is appreciated, is honored, no one is going to be like ignored. And that's always been important for me to emphasize in every conversation. Um, and I'm sure they'll tell you, they're like, yeah, she's always telling us like, <laughs> OK, you know, but and I, I genuinely mean that because it, it's not a journey that I'm doing alone. It, yeah. it is something um, that's also I'm I'm striving for success for all of us, not just for myself. Um, and not just for my band as well, as well as those partnerships that I have, like with My Grito Industries or other artists that I collaborate with. Like, I try to put everyone on when I can. In any conversation, if there's an opportunity to plug in a fellow, you know, musician or band, I'll plug them in. Mm -hmm. There's space for everyone. So I hate like when there's conversations or you can even see it where it's like they see it as a competition. Right. I will never see it as a competition. And I... And that's one thing I, I feel like both of you are very, very aware of that. I also don't like being compared to other artists. Like maybe if someone from back in the day, like you can compare me to Etta James, that's a compliment, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> but when it comes to like modern day artists who are also in the scene, don't compare me. We have our own journey. We have our own uh, passion for music style. And so like just let us be great in our own way, you know. Uh, very, I'm very proud of you. We're very proud of you, and uh, I would um, describe oh, you. Is this a hugging moment? Huggies. <laughs> um, de definitely a moment of um, uh, to say that you are a very strong individual. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna say, I, I don't like using this a lot. Um, as a father of three daughters, um, I, I've I've did my best in raising them to be very strong individuals and not to rely on anybody else mm -hmm. and to be assertive. Mm -hmm to be aggressive when need be. Mm -hmm. um, all these qualities and much more that I see in you. Mm. Um, I do still use the word, I'm still going to use the word because I think in this times, women 
still don't get the recognition that they deserve. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to refer you as a strong woman. I just want to tell you you're a strong person. Thank you. But I'm still going to emphasize the woman because I still think we need to do a much better job as a society. Come on. I, uh, <laughs> chingona. Don't hold she, back. She prefers chingona. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're doing an incredible job. Um, Thank I, you. I'm, we're grateful for everything that you've done with My Grito. Uh, we're grateful for everything that you that you will do with us in the future and beyond us. Yes. Um, we encourage much success for you, whether it be under my grito or whatever you decide. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned to you in previous conversations. It doesn't for for you to get our support. It doesn't have to be under our umbrella, yeah. because you broke the barrier that not every band on the label does this. Mm -hmm. You became more family because of the conversations that we've had. Yeah. The willingness to be I don't want to use the word Quiere llorar, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, pero, pero you've been you've been open to our feedback. Yes. Um yeah. I'm not saying that the other bands haven't. There has been several that have been yes. open to the feedback. Everything in conversation is in reference to my situation. Yes. Just putting that out there. <laughs> yes. So I do want to commend you for that. Um so with the band, um since you are asking for a lot more involvement for everybody so they can mm -hmm. all have some ownership in it, talk to me about the writing process. Because when yeah. you listen to your past music mm -hmm. and the music to come, which we've heard, if anybody's gone to your show, <laughs> they've heard the music. That's mm -hmm. going to be coming out pretty soon on 45s. Yeah. Tell me about the writing process that you go through. Is it just you? Is it somebody in the band that helps you out with it? Yeah, so I have the honor of working alongside uh, my guitarist, Esteban, which some of you may know. Mm -hmm. He's with uh, Chicano Shuffle, which is one of the amazing podcasts under My Grito on their podcast network. And as well as Jacob, uh, my keyboardist, um, very talented fella. Um, and so we, we've we all three worked together um, as like independently together, but as well as a group. Um, so, for instance, one of our songs that we are planning to release is called Quedate Conmigo, and that was written by Esteban and myself. So that one, I, I believe Esteban had just, like, written the guitar uh, parts, and he had just sent it to me uh, one night, and I, I'm i pretty sure, like, I wasn't doing anything, so I was listening, and I was like, whoa, like, it just spoke to me. And that's really something important for me to be able to write uh, lyrics to. Like, I have to feel it. I talked about how, like, you have to catch me in the te first 10 seconds, you know? And so that song did. And that same night, uh, I recorded a demo and I sent it back to him. And I was like, this is it, dude. Like, I think we got a, a solid track here. Um, because the way that I write is I freestyle. When I listen to a track, um, I'll just kind of record, like, an audio memo and then I'll just kind of see what comes and flows. And fortunately for that song, I think the structure that I um, freestyled was basically kept with the exception of maybe a little tweak here and there. But for the most part, it was basically what I sent that same night. Um, and then another song that I got to write with Jacob is Do You Love Me or Love Me Not, which is real upbeat, um, fun song. And we actually recently submitted that for our Tiny Desk Contest um, for 2024. And that one, I believe I had met up with Jacob and he sent me like a couple files that were like a minute and a half each of just music that he had already kind of created maybe a while back. And I just remember that one speaking to me as well. And in that moment, um, I wrote up for that one minute and 30 seconds and then we ended up meeting up and we finished the song within a session or two. And then eventually, you know, it kind of transformed based on the whole band coming in because Jacob had already written the music for it, like the drums, the guitar, the bass. And so now it's transformed a little bit, um, but I'm super excited to eventually get those officially out there. No, oh, and we are too. Yeah. Um, the, the, well, let me ask you in regards to when Esteban sent you uh, the, the guitar riffs and mm -hmm. then you started freestyling. It seems Started like rapping. you're. Ah, just ah, mira nomás. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but when when you talk about yeah the the freestyling, not the rapping, but the singing. <laughs> yes. Um, is your inspiration when it comes to you structuring the lyrics to a song? It seems to me, and I could be mm -hmm. wrong, but let me know. You are really banking on one of the most, if not the most powerful emotion out there, which is love. 
Would okay. you say that yeah. that's your biggest inspiration or is there something else behind your process? I would say the concept of love, right? Because uh, I wouldn't say I've been fortunate enough to experience love in a way that others have. Um, but just um, seeing it through my community, my partnerships, like with friends and seeing my parents um, and their relationship and, you know, genuine like love that is reciprocated and there's no, um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? Like unconditional, right? Like right. you're doing it out of you wanting to. And so like pulling from that and then there's also heartbreak in there because obviously this ain't a perfect world. We go through those situations where it just doesn't work out or you right. fall out of love, right? And Or maybe you, you get to really know um, who someone is and maybe it doesn't end up aligning with what you want in a partnership or in a partner. Um, but I would say the foundation is the concept of love for sure when it comes to my music. I like that. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I, I got to give you your flowers again for being <laughs> mature. Um, you mentioned without me asking. They're going to be like, how old is she, 15? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that, that's actually one thing I think when we talked about when we first met you, uh -huh. Maria, is that like we, for some reason, you know, we just, we, we, we took that away from, from that, that you were so mature for your mm. age. You know, and that's something that's always stuck with me is that like even just mm -hmm. hearing you speak and the way you go about your how you are is like you're so mature for your age, I think. You yeah, know, I think Oscar, mm -hmm. you know, we had that same kind of takeaway from the first time we met you. No, we did. I'm trying to remember when did we first meet? First uh, in person Adrian's, Adrian's was at show? Adrian Carmine's show. OK, yeah. Ah, yes, for his release with Sola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay, yes. So that was before we came out with our full album with him, Alma, mm -hmm. which is still available at mygrito.net. Yes, check that out. <laughs> great track But list, um, yeah. No, it was great meeting you. Um, but going off of what you said, you said that you have not, uh, without asking anything about past relationships, <laughs> but you don't know if you've experienced love He's before. He's a bit, a bit. <laughs> But, uh, but I like that you said that because mm -hmm. I think, um, again, me having three daughters and mm -hmm. um, from them being teenagers and them throwing around the word love and all these things and me thinking to myself, you really don't know love yet. Um, I hold myself guilty about that as well because yeah. even as a little chavalo in Santa Ana and <laughs> hanging out with this guy, I thought I was in love multiple mm, times. I bet. And, and it, was, it was really more affectionate. It was me feeling like I'm being appreciated, mm -hmm. but it wasn't love. And Maria, I'm going to tell you, um, so w w this, uh, on March 16th, my oldest daughter got married. Congratulations. Yes. And she asked me to officiate the wedding and give a speech. Mm -hmm. And it was such an, a tremendous honor for me to do that. Um, during my speech, I made the comment that I thought would be good advice mm -hmm. for them. Um, it turned out it was really good advice for the guests that were there, especially mm -hmm. because it was a four day little trip in Rosarito and I had a mm -hmm. chance to spend some time with a lot of her friends and there's a lot of nice. toxicos and toxicas oh, there. <laughs> everywhere, not so, just Rosarito. It, okay? it was everywhere, <laughs> but they had a couple sprinkled in. Uh. So it kind of changed my speech where I wanted to give a little bit of advice that I thought was appropriate without a, without a question to mm -hmm. both my daughter and my new son-in-law, mm -hmm. but also, also to some of the people there. Um, and I'll share it with you. Um, so I mentioned that I've been married to my wife for 17 years. This would be 17 years. I've been together with her for a lot longer than that. Mm -hmm. And since we've been married, this whole time I can easily say with every bit of confidence in, in, in my soul that I felt like I loved her. I loved her. I loved her. But it wasn't until a few years ago that, if at all, I better understood love. Just because I was getting older, just because I was doing all these different things, just because I tied the knot and I told myself that I love this woman, I still didn't understand love because of my actions. My actions were not always matching with what I came to find out was real love. Mm -hmm. And there was two qualities that I pointed out at this when, during this wedding speech that mm -hmm. I'll share with you. Um, and the first one is um, if you really want to have a healthy relationship healthy love. Mm -hmm. It's being able to understand the word responsibility within the relationship. Mm -hmm. And when I say responsibility, also accountability is being held responsible for your own self, for your own emotions, mm -hmm. being held responsible for your actions in a relationship. If you're having a discussion with your significant other mm -hmm. 
and there was something that your partner did not like, did not appreciate, they're complaining, call it what you will, call it bitching, I don't Mm -hmm. care, whatever it is, it was still something that made the other partner feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if you are being held responsible, you are open to hearing them out, and hopefully you haven't gotten to the point in the relationship where you're just tired of their shit. And if you are tired of their shit, maybe you shouldn't be together. But if there's still love there and you're holding yourself responsible mm-hmm. to listen to how they feel and be open enough to say, you know what? Those actions that you're saying do make sense. And that was not healthy of me to do that in respect to our relationship. Yeah. And I will be held accountable for that. And my actions going forward will reflect my understanding of what you just told me. And I will not hurt you that way. Mm-hmm. But also you, having the other partner understanding that responsibility of doing the mm-hmm. same. It, when you're able to hold each other responsible for your own feelings mm-hmm. and acknowledging the other person, you can go a long way. I even went to the extent of saying, stop it with this. I can change him bullshit. Yeah. You can't accept the person for who they are. Mm-hmm. And with that, don't be that person where, hey, um, uh, I can change I can change him. And I'm going to say him because most of the time I hear the girls wanting mm-hmm. to change the men, not the other way around. Rob, um, is that the case? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, what I've experienced when I was going through my shit, um, which I still am and I always will, it just depending on what kind of, um, uh, what kind of level of shit am I going through, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of degree am I in? Mm-hmm. Um, I remember telling my wife something along the lines of, hey, because she was very concerned about what I was going through. And I told her, hey, um, I am going through some shit right now. Yeah. And I need to get through this by myself, Mm -hmm. not with you. All I need from you is to support me while I'm going through this and know that I'm working on it. That's all it was. Mm -hmm. And I I was able to work on it, and our relationship got that much stronger. Mm -hmm. So the first thing was responsibility. Mm -hmm. The second thing was rejection that I mentioned during my wedding speech And it's the ability to feel okay to reject the other person Mm -hmm. and to get rejected by the other person. In other words, understanding that you're both individuals. This is to have a healthy relationship. Not everybody at all times want to spend every fucking minute with each other. Mm -hmm. You all want to have your own time, your own passions, your own projects. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, having a clear understanding that once you are in this thing we called marriage, Mm -hmm. that you are a team and there's nobody else in the world that you should be the most vulnerable with than your significant other, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you also need to respect that I have my own shit that I want to do at times. Mm-hmm. And when you want to spend time with me, it depends on the moment. You got to be okay with me saying, no, you know what? This is very important to me and I want to do this. Mm-hmm. Or, you know what? I really want to go out with my friends. As long as it's not consistent, it's all the time. And at that point, you don't understand the balance between your time and your family. Mm -hmm. And that's when you really need to get checked. Um, He's like, mic drop. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) That was a moment. It worked out really well. And and, and thank you. I know this interview is more about you, Maria. Sorry, I I, I, I shared a little too much. This is an open conversation. And uh, I know when you invited me, that's what I expressed to you. Like, treat it like we're just chatting. Because that's how it should be. Like, I don't want it to feel like, we uh, rehearsed this, like, you know? No, like, this is a genuine conversation that we're having in the moment. Yeah. Um, and those are always the best interviews, too. Like, yeah. interviews, and, you know, when it's, like, everyone's going to ask the same questions, like, mm-hmm. tell me about the song or tell me about the background mm-hmm. of the song. But, like, when you're actually just talking about stuff that like, applies to everybody, because everyone's yes. got emotion. Everyone falls in love. Everyone falls out of love. Everyone has heartbreaks. So it's, like, talking mm-hmm. about the stuff for me as a listener is way more mm-hmm. entertaining than, you know, learning you more about front Maria. row yeah. seat right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> We'll charge him later, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to speak on that. Like um, when I've had conversations with friends or, you know, other folks in general, um, I feel like people really misinterpret the difference between loving someone and being in love with someone. Like I, as a friend, I love you guys, right? Because we've built such a, an amazing friendship that like I can genuinely say I care for you and your health and your well-being as well as your, you know, your family. Whereas being in love with someone, I think you've now developed, um, I don't know, like a higher level of love and admiration for this person and respect that you cannot see life without them mm-hmm. because they're like your partner and, you know, in, in everything, empowering you and, and all that. So I think there's um, 
there's a big difference between that. So I've noticed like some friends, uh, it, when you love drop them, you know, like you say, I love you. They're kind of like, whoa. And it's like, whoa, like my love. When I say I love you, it's because I care for you. It's not like, oh, like, what's up? Like, you know, I, I'm in love with you. Yeah. And I think that that's a big um, misconception that folks have. And I feel like that needs to be discussed more. Um, so tell your friends, tell your your family that you love them. Like, you can't be afraid to express that. Like, express that now while they're here as opposed to waiting when they're gone, you know? So Yeah, that's something that actually needs to be a lot more normalized between, especially among men, too. Yes. Like, we got years ago, we started saying to each other, hey, I love you, man. You know, even mm-hmm. I love, I've loved this guy for years. And, mm-hmm. you know, mutually. He's not even paying yeah, attention. Yeah. <laughs> He's not paying attention, man, yeah. I'm telling I, you, I you, love you. I know you, you were looking, because he was love. looking for eye contact. I'm not going to give him that. <laughs> So, but that needs to be more nor- normalized. Yeah. It's like telling your homie that you love him, you know? It's exactly. Like, so, exactly. I love you, bro. I love you too, and I wish we would have seen Juan Gabriel. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> it didn't happen, but I wish it yeah. did. <sighs> pues ya pasó. Yeah, yeah pasó. Así es la vida, and mm. you move forward. Yeah. Simon. New memories. <laughs> um, with that, Maria, um, I do want to thank you for being on the show. I do have uh, three questions that I normally ask, which one we already addressed with. Mm-hmm. Uh, La Rola that you would want on your death playlist, which, again, your song is on my playlist. My playlist is on your playlist. (laughs) Ahí está. Um, But I wanted to ask you the other two questions Mm -hmm. um, because I think it's only fair. Um, So the first question is, out of the three, I would like for you to choose one and give Mm -hmm. us your your favorite answer. Mm -hmm. Um, Between your favorite movie, book, or app on your phone, um, what uh which one uh, which one do you, would you like to share with us <laughs> yeah i would say a book um that i recently read in the past year or year and a half now um is etta jane's biography and it is such a beautiful story but sad of course um just hearing about the way she navigated through life and what she experienced um Fun fact, she actually passed away in Riverside, where I'm from, and I believe she actually passed away in the hospital that I was born in as well, the Riverside Community Hospital. Um, So currently, um, I'm letting Jazz borrow my book. I'm all, Jazz, you better be reading it. Um, Jazz. Oh, I didn't even get to introduce my band. Go ahead. We'll do that after. We'll do that after. Um, But yes, uh, the Etta James biography is just amazing because you really get to see into every little piece of her life. I'm sure it doesn't paint the full story, but you know, she went through a lot of ups and downs as an artist, you know, at, in her time, um, specifically with substance abuse and, and all that, but then the way that she was able to get rehabilitation, but then unfortunately kind of went back into substance abuse. Um, but just learning about her journey was amazing, and I would highly recommend uh, reading that if you haven't. Because um, I, I do have a, a love for her music as well. So, yeah. Uh, all I'm simply gonna do is ask Jazz to let me borrow it. Oh next. my god! <laughs> hey, you, you get. I think there's a whole list I have of people who want to borrow it. <laughs> Shout out to Robert, my drummer. He's actually yeah. the one who gave it to me for Christmas. Um, um, I think two years ago now, and he wrote me a nice little message and just said that, uh, basically, I was kind of like a force to be reckoned with and that I was empowering. Um, so huge shout out to Robert. What's <laughs> up, Robert? Um, (laughs) Before I ask you the last question, why don't you do us a favor and introduce your band, which is well-deserved? Please. Yes. So, again, we're Maria Sanchez in the Midnight Groove. So that consists of, um, vocalist-wise, is Jazz Sanchez. That's my soul sister right there. Make sure to check her out on Instagram at Jazz Sanchez um, Music. Then we have Esteban, who's our, um, our guitarist, an amazing guitarist, and as well on Chicano Shuffle, the podcast. Uh, we also have Vinny, my bass player, amazing bass player who also um, plays with Harry Cats and the Pistachios, sometimes Adrian Carmine as well. Um, and then we have Jacob, my keyboardist, super talented fella um, into skateboarding, but also like videography. He actually put out a video um, in the last year called Crescendo, where um, a demo of our song, Do You Love Me or Let Me Not, actually was featured on it at the end for the credits. So make sure to check that out. And then last but not least, we got Robert on drums. Um, amazing, amazing, talented drummer. And I'm just so fortunate to to create music with all these folks and just have that really close-knit uh, relationship with all of them. So shout out to them. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, Maria, let me ask you uh, the last question that, that oh I ask God, everybody. This is the heaviest one. one. <laughs> <No>. Aguántate. <laughs> 
Um, so, um, because I am in the insurance industry, I like asking this question to my clients. I'm going to be asking you the same question. Mm -hmm. uh, when that time comes, Maria, and you are no longer physically here, mm -hmm. you are, and you have unfortunately passed on to the other side, mm -hmm. um, how do you hope people will remember Maria Sanchez when your name comes up and they say something about, oh, Maria, I remember her. She's mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Well, I just want to say that's such a beautiful question because I, I've heard you ask it in previous episodes. Um, so I think that's an amazing way to end this conversation. But for me personally, I feel like there's two different ways that I would hope, um, one in the music aspect and one personal. Um, so I feel like I've always tried to be as inclusive of everyone that I can. Um, so I would hope that when folks hear my name or I'm brought up in conversation, they'll think about the time that they have interacted with me or memories that we've had and been like, I just remember her like being so welcoming and um, loving, like feeling that love because I, I'm very adamant about expressing my love in the moment. Like I'm not gonna hold back. If I missed you, I'm gonna tell you I missed you. If I'm so proud of you for doing something, I'm gonna tell you that. Um, or encourage you to continue to do better. So I would hope that they remember me as someone who uh, was motivating, uh, welcoming, inclusive, loving, um, and just like a warm feeling when they think about that and just think about the amazing memories we've had together. Um, and that's specifically as well with my family, just embracing those moments. Um, as an artist, I would hope that folks would remember the music that I created, the lyrics that I've written and how maybe they've resonated with that or it's allowed them to move forward in their situations or even feel heard or seen, right? Because um, I feel like sometimes we don't have the words to express how we feel, but music always has a perfect way to showcase that. And so I would hope that my music could be that for someone, um, even if it's just one person. Um, so, yeah, I would say that and a chingona because I get my shit done. Like do. when I, you know, if I have a dream or an ambition that I want to achieve, I'm going to get it done one way or another. And I don't quit, even if it's challenging, because for me, it's like also thinking about the way I've grown up. My life has always been a challenge, but I love that because that that now allows me to grow as a person and to not only um be successful for myself, but then put on the rest of my community and teach them, you know, and, and so on. So I would hope that all that in combination is what I'm remembered for. And, you know, if I have kids eventually and hopefully they're talented, too, like me. No, yeah. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> but um, a piece of me, you know, being with them and now having music out there, I was like, that's such a, a beautiful way for my family and maybe my future kids and grandkids to remember me by as well. So. That was beautifully said. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that even as of right now, that is all true. Mm, thank so you. even though you're saying this is how you hope. My unborn children. But todo lo demás, you're no, an incredible you. chingona that backs it, backs your shit up. Thank you. Um, you've always shown that with Rob and I, mm -hmm. any project that we've worked on, any phone calls that we've had, any times that we've, We've hung out. We've always mm -hmm. seen seen this about you. And I think that's one of the reasons why we're such big fans of you and your music and what you've done. And we always want to wish the best to you and, and the rest of the band mm -hmm. because I can only wait. I can't wait <laughs> to be at that moment when you guys are performing at Crypto It'll or happen. other big venues. I, I genuinely, and I've had this conversation with my band where like, and it's not to sound cocky or anything. I've always said the talent is there. It's just a lack of exposure. Um, and so that's why we're like we're constantly pushing to put out work, to connect. Um, again, I don't see this as a competition. I see it as a way to share this beautiful art, you know, in the form of music for everyone to listen to. And I genuinely feel that we will make it up there with timing, you know. Um, so I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited to to be there and to bring my community with me, you know, to see Rob and Oscar and Gil behind the scenes as well um, there. And it's going to be major. I'm excited for all that in the future. Awesome. Well, thank you again for being on the show, Maria. I, re I really appreciate you being on here and, and for being a part of our lives. Um, again, if you want to go ahead and uh, look up Maria, 
You can simply on Spotify go to Maria Sanchez. As of right now, the band name is not on Spotify yet, but it's Maria Sanchez. So you can go in on there. Caps. In all caps. <laughs> um, also groovy underscore MS. If you want to find her on Instagram, which will give you the opportunity to take a look at upcoming shows, um, music that she's creating, uh, fun things that she's uh, that mm -hmm. she's doing to promote. Um, she's a big believer in promoting other talent, as she mentioned here on the on the episode. So make sure that you give her a follow just because she's a fucking genuine person mm -hmm. with a lot of talent. And I think that would give you um, an opportunity just to really be inspired by all her work and for the artists that she's going to become in the future. The the uh, as I've done before, I always give some type of financial advice um, at the very end, um, and it's always going to be connected to the conversation that I've had with my guests uh, today. Um, this is something that, of course, Maria did not have the ability to do, but I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm hoping that you listeners may have this opportunity to have this conversation in order to better put yourselves in a more protected position if you have conversations with your parents. Uh, Marianne mentioned that her biological mother passed away at, at the age of eight when she was when Maria was eight years old. Um, nothing she can do about it, but she became part of an incredible family, a lot of uh, very good siblings, a great mom and dad mm -hmm. that have motivated her, that have given her a lot of inspiration and support throughout her life. Um, but for the rest of you, uh, if you still have your parents here, um, or, or somebody that you view as your parent, be comfortable in having the conversation with them about the legacy that they want to leave behind. Um, be comfortable in asking them questions, questions like the ones that we've asked during the Harless Sweetwater episode, and that was episode number five. Um, a good conversation to have with your parents, and I know it's a difficult one, but it's about creating a better legacy for other generations is have a conversation with them. If your parent is healthy enough, that's important. If they're healthy enough, they may have an opportunity to also apply for life insurance. And they may be thinking, life insurance? So I need to pay for something else? No. Talk it over with your siblings, if you do have siblings, and you can pay for that life insurance policy on your parent, but there's a way on how to explain it to them that on how it can help out other generations and to make sure that it can help out if, if it's still husband and wife, um, or in other combinations, um, how they can, the, how that life insurance policy could be there to help each other out first, and then eventually the children, grandchildren, or possibly a church or a charity. So there is a way where you can get life insurance on a parent and for you to pay the premiums to make things easier for everybody. I can promise you this. If you get the right policy at an affordable rate, it would be one of the best financial decisions that you've ever made. But the thing that you have to do is act. And what I mean by act is ask questions on how that could work. All you simply have to do is uh, send us a DM. You can either send a DM to the Magrito Instagram account, or you can send one to me personally. My personal Instagram is the letter N, and like Nancy, underscore the Oscar goes to. So N underscore the Oscar goes to. And I'll be happy to give you some information on how you can do that. So again, um, for the for the final time for today. Maria, thank you for being on the show. Thank uh, you for Rob, me. thank you for fucking finally making it out to one of our episodes. Thanks for, thanks for asking me. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll come by again. Two chingones and one chingona up in here? Wait. Oh, three there's, chingones. there's more. Three chingones. <laughs> and, and last but not least, uh, one of my partners in crime when we came up with My Grito podcast, um, Gil, all his support with MindBuzz Media, all of this couldn't be possible with without his support, with us having an opportunity to work with him, um, for him to give us advice on how to do it. We're still learning, but if you are interested in doing your own podcast, please reach out to Gil at MindBus Media, and he'll be more than happy to tell you on how he can help you out. So again, thank you for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Uh, this is Oscar, and this is My Grito. Gracias. <laughs> Just a piece in my room. Now we're in